Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. I have been so excited for this video. It is beyond excitement. I know I get excited, but I've not been this excited since I started Epoxy Resin. So Jesmonite. I heard of Jesmonite for the first time last October. I saw a few TikToks on it and I, I got really interested in what it was, where it came from and all of these things. And it has actually been around for a a good couple of decades if not a few decades now but I guess it's becoming more and more mainstream in the art world and honestly trying to find out about it was really tricky there weren't much um, there weren't many videos on it it was really it was really quite difficult I asked a few questions over on TikTok and I was I was told not to ask questions because it was their business which I fully understand but I found it really hard I like to learn by watching and when there's not much out there I, I found it really hard to learn but this past month, I've seen quite a few videos coming out now, and especially Sharon Lindley, the amazing Sharon Lindley. She's done a couple of videos on it too, and I'm just so excited to bring you this. I'm actually filming a mini series on Jesmonite, everything I've learned so far. I ordered mine in January, and it went out of stock pretty quickly. So when I finally got some, I just cracked straight in, and I just am learning as I go. I have to do a massive thank you to an amazing lady called Virginia who I met on TikTok and she's the only one I've met so far who's willing to just help me with any questions I had because it's really hard to learn when there's not much information out there. Virginia at Virginia Studios, she's a Jesmonite artist and she already has the most incredible work available on her website. I'm going to link that down below just as a massive thank you to her for just teaching me so much and she does regular weekly TikTok lives live videos and teaching people about Jesmonite and how to use it and I just think that's incredible because that's the kind of person I am I want to share and show you how to do things if you've not heard of them before I'm going to stop talking and let's get into the video so what is Jesmonite? Jesmonite is there's so many words in here I keep muddling it up but Jesmonite is it's a non-toxic water-based acrylic compound resin I did it <laughs> It is a non-toxic, eco-friendly alternative to epoxy resin. And when I tell you, this was what excited me. Because there's hardly any waste. In fact, probably none if you really work hard. And that is what I love about it. So, Jesmonite is a two-part system. Very, very similar to epoxy resin. There's a powder and a liquid. And the ratio of that is 1 to 2.5. So, it's one part liquid, 2.5 parts powder. I'm still very much at the early stages of learning about Jesmonite, so I still have to learn how much I'm going to need for each project. Something I don't even do with epoxy resin is work out how much I need in advance. I just have moulds to hand for any leftovers, and uh, that's pretty much what happened in today's video when I show you what I made. Like I just said, Jesmonite is an eco-friendly resin. The reason it's eco-friendly is because it's powder-based and water-based. It's not chemical-based like epoxy resin. On the Jesmonite website, it clearly says, after you've used all you can use and you use all of your leftovers, you can simply rinse out your materials in the sink with water because it's a non-toxic, eco-friendly, water-based compound. For me, I just think Jesmonite's going to be such an incredible alternative. I've had so many messages from people over the last year saying they'd love to try epoxy resin, but they really don't want to. They can't for safety, health reasons, various reasons that they are not able to use epoxy resin. So for me, Jesmonite is just an exciting alternative to that. Now, there isn't much information out there on PPE and Jesmonite. I personally choose to wear gloves and I'm choosing to wear a dust mask. You don't need your big respirator for toxic fumes and gases because it's a, it's a safer alternative to epoxy. But because it is powder based, it's like using, I can only compare it to plaster of Paris or quick set concrete. Because that's a powder, I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to wear a dust mask. So where can you get your Jesmonite from? My advice to everybody would be to type in to the internet, where is your local Jesmonite stockist? They have quite a lot of stockists in the UK. The two closest to me were in London, but one, the website didn't work, and the other one was called Flint's Theatre Theater Company. They supply the theatres with lots of different things and lighting and all of the things I didn't understand, but they have a section on sculpture making, and that's where I found the Jesmonite. I am using Jesmonite AC100. This is the Jesmonite 
that I would say the majority of Jesmonite artists do use. They have different Jesmonites. I don't want to pretend I know anything about them. Some of them are a lot more concrete with holes as you would see in concrete and you can get really heavy duty Jesmonites. But the one I'm using in today's video and the one I will probably continue to use always is the AC100. Cost of Jesmonite I would say is pretty comparable with epoxy resin. We're not on any money saving mission I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, you can get it in different quantities so to save money or you can buy it in massive quantities if you want to do long-term products but jesmonite does have a sell-by date i was reading up on their website yesterday and i think for the for the liquid it's about a year and for the powder is about six months so you would need to work out exactly what you need what you need it for and how long that's going to last you so talking about jesmonite pigments and jesmonite colorants Honestly, all of my research and talking to Virginia and talking to pretty much anyone I know now who's starting Jesmonite, you really can't use any other pigments with Jesmonite apart from Jesmonite pigments. Now, if you're a resin artist like myself and you've got hundreds of resin pigments, I'm afraid they just won't work. Jesmonite has a massively fast cure time, which I will talk about in a second. So the Jesmonite pigment, pigments are pretty much, they're like water. I can only describe them as pigmented water. So because Jesmonite sets so fast, that's why you need Jesmonite pigments. Now I have seen people using mica powder in their Jesmonite and you can use mica powder. Um, you can mix the powder in with the powder part of the Jesmonite, but honestly, the products that I've seen using mica powder are pale, in, they, they, they don't really compare to using the vibrant colors that you get with Jesmonite pigment. Okay, now we need to talk about the most exciting thing about Jesmonite. It cures in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <sighs> when you're used to doing epoxy resin and you know that as soon as you've made a piece, you walk away and you come back 24 hours later with Jesmonite, it cures so fast it blew me away and I think that's the most exciting thing about Jesmonite imagining how much you can get done in one day compared to epoxy resin the downside of the fast cure time is the fast work time there's no longer have you got a one hour window like you have with epoxy resin it is a five to ten minute window so you have to be ready. Whatever you are doing with Jesmonite, you have to be ready. You have to be prepared. You have to have your colors ready. You have to have your molds ready. There's no play time. It is between five and 10 minutes after you've mixed both parts together, they start to cure immediately. So it's very, very similar to Plaster of Paris and Quick Set Concrete. But what happens is you're going to mix your Jesmonite, pour it into the mold, and then you have to absolutely have to demold that jesmonite within 30 minutes of pouring because if you don't it is a product that will start to sweat and then the product will get sweat patches on it and water patches so all the products i've made so far i have demolded between 20 and 25 minutes after pouring and then you have to make sure that air can get to that product all around so you either lift it up and you put it on an airing rack or what I do is what Virginia taught me, and that is just to flip your mold upside down, take the piece out of the mold and rest it on that mold for 24 hours, allowing it to cure fully. Does Jesmonite need sealing? Yes and no. So Jesmonite is an indoor and outdoor product, which means you can make plant pots for your garden or artwork for your, oh, artwork, that would be incredible. Artwork for your garden. I'm already thinking, um, tiling and things like that but anyway I won't skip ahead um, so it does need sealing if you are going to use it for things like coasters where liquids will spill or if you're going to use it outside where the rain will fall and for that you will need some jesmonite sealant now I've had a really good read of their website yesterday and actually jesmonite on their website it says that most products out there most acrylic sealers will work with the with the jesmonite ac100 so that is a good tip i didn't know this until yesterday i've already bought my jesmonite sealant <laughs> but it's a good tip to know moving forward and all you do it's like a varnish you brush it onto the product and that will seal it from any water damage 
I'm very aware I've been talking for the longest time, but I hope the information I've given you is really, really helpful and it will help you decide whether or not you want to go forward with Jesmonite. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to make a tray. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so sorry for my excitement. I just hope you love it as much as I do. This is going out tonight. Tomorrow night's video is going to be all about making our own pigments for Jesmonite from all of the range that you can get with Jesmonite. So I got my Jesmonite pigments from Resin 8. They've just started out with a brand new branch of Jesmonite products. And these are the only colours you can get at the moment. So you've got yellow oxide, blue, red, black, green and yellow and white. And they really are the only ones. So if you wanted to make your own, which I'm going to be doing in my next video, then you can have a play and mix them around and see what works. This is what the kit looks like that I got from Flint's. Now this was a 17.5 kg kit, it's huge, and it cost me around 55 pounds before VAT, but added VAT plus their 17 pounds 50 postage, it came to around the 90 pounds mark. So it is quite a lot, but even comparing it to resin prices, this is a, this is a good price for 17.5 kg. <laughs> As I said in the beginning of the video, it is measurable by weight and it's a ratio of 1 to 2.5. So I poured 150 grams of the liquid. I always pour the liquid first and then I just times that by 2.5 to get the powder weight. So when I come to mix the powder, this is when I put make sure I've got my mask on. I can't see any powder really, to be honest, um, floating up. It's not like icing sugar where it goes everywhere, um, she says, as she gets some on the scales. <laughs> but I do make sure I've got my mask on at this point. And when it comes to mixing the two components together, you always want to put the powder into the liquid and not the other way around. It's very much like baking a cake, so you just want to pour the powder in a little at a time and stir it. Now, Jesmonite themselves recommend that you buy a Jesmonite blade to mix this, these two compounds together. Um, I haven't yet done that. I have seen people on TikTok using like a food blender blade. Um, again, I haven't done that either. Um, Virginia uses what I use here, she uses stirring equipment. She says she hasn't had a problem so far. Um, so at the moment, I'm going to be using my silicon whisk, just because I know then I'll be able to clean that whisk quite easily and use those pieces afterwards. So you can just see me here mixing, adding a little bit of powder at a time, mixing some more, adding some more powder, mixing some more, and you just wanna do this until all of that powder has gone. I don't want to really go rogue with the measurements because it will weaken your product and um, the stronger it is the better. So in this video I am going to do my favourite which is the mustard and the black and white marble tray. Now I have noticed even just doing this video that the yellow oxide doesn't go as far as the red and the black. The red and the black honestly you just need one tiny tiny drop and it is completely and utterly um, integrated into that jesmonite. But with the yellow oxide, I feel like I, I did need quite a bit in there, say three drops, to get it to the mustard colour that I really, really wanted it. But we got there in the end, and I love it. Now, remembering that a little, little bit of this pigment goes a long way. I'm using a cocktail stick to flick spots. That's all a few spots you'll see now how far this pigment goes i'm giving it a bit of a swirl to give it the marble but i'm not doing any more than that do not mix it any more than that otherwise the marble it will just be way way too muddy and you'll lose most of it so i don't really know if you're meant to pour close to the mold or high up from the mold um but at the moment it's working quite happily pouring quite close to the mold and the marble look at this now I'm just pouring here in one spot, but what I have done as well in the past is kind of spin the jar so you're doing tiny little spirals as it comes out. Every single pattern that I've ever done with this marble has come out different and I just absolutely love it. As soon as your mould is full up, then you want to just tap the sides to get rid of any of those air bubbles. Now I am filling my moulds completely and utterly to the top because I don't want to sand afterwards. But you don't have to. When you demould, 
you can sand immediately after demold the best time just to sand the edges down to make sure they're not sharp if you've done epoxy resin you'll know that the sides can get sharp and that is why you'll see i have filled it right up now to get rid of any air bubbles don't use heat don't use a lighter nothing like that you just have to blow those bubbles out and here i've just got a little bit of leftover so i've grabbed a mold and I'm just going to fill that mould up and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to tap the sides to get all of the air bubbles out. And then if I've got any more air bubbles laying on the surface, I will use a straw to blow on them again to get them out. This is not like epoxy resin. You do not need a heat tool. Do not use flame. Um, just they will naturally work their way out. And I'm so excited to show you how fast these, these are ready. So to give you an idea of how quickly these go off, this has been four minutes since I poured it and it has gone. And this is pretty much the same as this one, it's gone as well. So they cure under their own heat and they cure pretty fast, but don't let that put you off. Um, when you're not filming for YouTube, <laughs> things are sometimes quite easier to just get things done and that, that, that pressure, that time pressure doesn't feel so, so bad. Um, but yeah, really really fast so i'm going to leave these around 20 minutes 25 minutes and then i'm going to demold them you need to demold jesmini after between 20 and 30 minutes after pouring because it starts to sweat inside the mold and what that will do is create sweat patches and water patches on the jesmini which are as far as i've been told really difficult to get rid of and you'd have to sand it all back and we don't want that so all of the pieces I've made so far, I have demolded them between 20 and 25 minutes after I've poured them. So even if I lift this up to the camera, already after 10, 15 minutes, it's coming away. But I'm still going to leave it there just to do its thing for another 10 minutes. It has now been 24 minutes exactly, exactly that I have poured this one. So it is still quite warm now. Um, people do wait for them to cool down before they demold but honestly I'd rather get it out now so it doesn't start sweating I think as I learn more and more about the product I'll feel more confident and know exactly when you know I'll, I'll, get, I'll get that moment right where I know I've got to demold so this is the first one we made and it is fragile at this point and can be snapped quite easily i'm going to do a video on snapping as well have i haven't tried that myself yet but i'm going to do one so i'm going to turn it around to make it safer <laughs> less likely to crack are we ready this is how fast oh my goodness me oh my goodness me oh my guys i'm in love i'm in actual love i cannot i cannot deal with how much <laughs> i'm loving this look at this look at this just look at this okay this is 24 25 minutes after pouring okay <laughs> this is a game changer this is a life changer for me i'm not saying this is going to become a jesmonite channel but then i don't <laughs> i don't want to requote myself from when i said i'd never be a, a resin channel but yeah look at this look at this marbling detail absolutely breathtaking breathtaking right what you need to do now another important step you need to make sure that this cures for 24 hours for example if you're selling them to send them out you know they need to cure for 24 hours before you really start to use them in your house you need to make sure air gets to the whole thing so my lovely friend Virginia basically taught me to just rest it back on the mold like that and leave it for 24 hours now we'll do the coaster oh, oh tell me what you're thinking so far guys because oh gosh i'm just oh this one pops out so easy are we ready wow oh look at him a little bit of pesky dye in there but that's okay just look look at that marbling that marbling is, it's just special. I, I, I'm, ne I'm not good at marbling with um, resin, but I think this was a bit of dye left over in the, in the mold. But so that's human error, but look at this. Okay, same thing again. This needs to cure for 24 hours before I use it for, use it for anything. So I'm just gonna rest it here. 
what I'm going to do, I mentioned at the beginning, sometimes they need sealing, sometimes they don't, it depends what you're using them for. This is going to be a coaster, so this is going to have drinks on it, potential spillage of fluids on it. So, this will get a coating of Jesmonite sealer. This probably won't, because, you know, if, if it's not going to be used as something for liquids, or it's not going to be put outside, it's just going to be used maybe as a key tray, or a trinket tray, or something for candles, then this won't need a sealer. One of the best things about Jesmonite is that it's reusable and I said at the beginning it is eco-friendly it can be reused it's water-based it's safe the best part I'm so excited to try this this is going to be another video hopefully it'll be the next video coming along in my little Jesmonite series is terrazzo so Jesmonite terrazzo sorry about background noise my neighbors are out in force um, doing their gardening um yeah it comes away from your packaging, from your plastic containers, real easy. Turn this pot upside down. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> no, it's here. Um, give it a tap. Give it a squish. And you've got all of those leftover pieces. What are we going to do with those leftover pieces, you're asking? We're going to make terrazzo. So, because, you know, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to try so many new things. Um, that's going to go into my white terrazzo. Yes, I... Oh, sorry, dog. Next door's dog. Um, yeah, this is going to go into my white pot for my white and grey and black terrazzo. And oh, because I've got a pink one. I've got a multicolour one. I've got a blue. I've got a yellow. I've got a red. I've got a black. <laughs> and finally, I've got a mustard. <laughs> I think this is my favourite colour combo right now. Black and mustard. Just absolutely. Well, it's mustard, isn't it? It's just mustard. Right. So, that's what we can do with the leftovers. So, don't ever throw any leftovers, okay? The only thing, I do try and get it off the lollipop sticks. They are a bit awkward, but have a, have a bit of a, a manipulation of the lollipop stick and it kind of just pops off like that. Um, and then save it. Save it all. Save as much as you can save. Now, I went out of my way to create these chips, which I will also do in another video. But you don't have to as you move along. And I think as I work more and more with Jesmonite, I won't have to do that. I'll have so many leftovers and I'll have all of my pots ready for those colours to go into. But because I'm brand new, because I've never done this before, I did need to create my own terrazzo. So that's that. And I will definitely do that in another video. So I really am so excited to learn more about this product and gain knowledge and grow with this product. Honestly, I am. I hope you've really enjoyed this little introduction to Jesmonite and what is it and what you can use it for. So um, this was very, very much um, marbling with Jesmonite. You don't have to marble. I love, love this marbling effect. You can marble within marble. So even with pink you could get different variations of pink within that marble lots of different options so i've hoped you've enjoyed this video i hope it has been informative and i hope that you love these and um i'm going to show you now other ones that i've made and hopefully that will inspire you um to get thinking about what you would make and oh i hope you love them mm -hmm.